Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and yes, you've read the episode title, it's time for another Not List, aka an episode of These Things Suck, a format where I and my neck vein Jeremy take a whistle stop tour around the gaming industry, find things that absolutely rustle our jimmies and then make videos about them for your entertainment and I die a little each and every time, you're welcome. And today we're talking about video game mechanics, which are kind of like muscle fibers that wrap over the bones of a digital experience, allowing for the narrative femur to burst forth into action and carry the story along, or the knuckles made of emotion to hit with extra force. These weren't mechanical muscles to be flexed, they were ones in goddamn atrophy, my friends, because we're gonna look at some absolute rotters today. But fear not, because I actually have been training, because you might be looking at this thinking, why has it got the again thing in brackets? And it's because I covered this way back when. It was the first These Things Suck, and I'm back stronger. Uh, nah, no, that's, no, that's not even true. I'm actually weaker because of not exercising as much recently. Am I even ready for this marathon of a sprint? Who knows? Hit the explosion. <laughs> So here we are fresh out of the gate and already I feel like I'm running out of bloody energy because we're talking about all of those free-to-play titles that use energy as a resource and use it to utterly grind down your soul. You see, in the free-to-play genre, time is most definitely money, and it's this mindset that sees F2P titles abuse what little free time you have in your own personal life in a desperate attempt to make you pay to remove the waiting period. As you try to build bases or muster forces for battle, that little energy bar, whatever guys it's under, will drain and drain until, whoops, looks like we got a whoops here, guys. We're gonna have to pay for a bit more of that Peruvian nose powder, you know what I'm saying? Let's keep that energy going. I understand that free-to-play titles have to recoup their losses and turn a profit, but adding in such levels of bloat that Mr. Creosote got heartburn just by looking at it is an utterly gross mechanic indeed. There used to be a time where titles would shy around the subject at least a little, offering players elongated but not offensive periods of downtime and at least trying to give you some other distractions in order to make the wait seem less arduous. Nowadays, you're almost hit with paywalls as soon as you start up the game until you just act like a good little piggy and give us some cash. There are much less insidious ways to make money from free-to-play titles, such as cosmetic skins and non-gameplay affecting perks, but for a title to use time itself against you while clearly having no respect for your own, well that, my friends, is a mentality that we should be hitting right in the tip of its clock. I'm pretty sure that we can all think back to an embarrassing moment that happened in our lives. You know, that type of experience that makes your face go utterly red and make the shape of a cat's bum hole if it could taste lemon juice. That real, real deep shame of embarrassment. And usually, I would likely wager that a fair few of these happened when we tripped, stumbled, or fell. I mean, for example, you could cook a roast beef on the heat that's irradiated from my red face after taking a tumble in public, and it's not an experience that I imagine anyone wants to happen to them more than once. Therefore, you can imagine how utterly infuriating it was for Smash Brothers Brawl to include tripping as a core mechanic. It's like some higher up at Nintendo saw a child fall over and skin their knee and were just like, yes, yes, that for our game. <laughs> never making that face again, gif it if you want. <laughs> for those not in the know, at any point during a match in Brawl, your character has a not so insignificant chance of tripping up, rendering them vulnerable for a few frames. The idea behind it was that this would give players on the bad end of a beatdown a chance for a comeback and otherwise level the playing field between experienced players and absolute newcomers. Now normally this is where I'd be saying something like, well it sounds fine on paper, right? But no, this is completely wrong. Why would you ever want tripping in a fighting game of this caliber? It would be like trying to do a quick time event to stop Sam Fisher from letting out a sloppy wet fart during a stealth mission. It's got no place being there. Tripping became one of the most hated mechanics in all of pro gaming, as thanks to the RNG nature of it and the inability to turn it off in the menu, even experienced players found themselves slipping on this dog turd idea more than was ever necessary. And for the record, zero is the times it was necessary. Now, sometimes mechanics in a video game aren't there for your enjoyment, they are just there to keep the game balanced and fair. Thus making a more competitive scene and one that you're more likely to return to no matter what your skill level is. However, as tripping proved, you can indeed go a little too far off course in the balance department, or as was the case of Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed, you can tell the balance to absolutely f*** off. In kart racing games, there are usually measures taken to make sure the gap between the first player and last player are as small as possible, and thanks to rubber banding, which affords players lower down the rungs a speed or handling boost to get them back in the game, or an assortment of more powerful items to clear your path, you're always left with a chaotic and competitive affair. 
However, for some unknown reason, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed took that embedded concept and just said, nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, yeah. Because here you could rack up missiles and traps that basically cement you in pole position when you're in first place. Hell, you could even get speed boost, meaning that you could flip the bird and scream off into the sunset, cackling like a madman. Before I go any further, I just have to say, I actually really adore this game. I think it's amazing, but indeed, a choice was made. And that choice is, if you are not first, you are just dead last. The unskippable cutscene. Even saying its name aloud feels like I'm summoning some sort of unholy demon from the nether. And truly, the concept of a lengthy scripted scene that you can't skip through must be the work of Lucifer himself. And we all enjoyed taking a break from time to time to let the action speak for itself, but for some reason, so many titles seem to turn what should be an enjoyable experience into something akin to having someone pour acid in your crotch. Whether being placed before a horrendous boss battle that would kick your ass more than the job market will after leaving school Look forward to that one, kids. Or having them be directed by Hideo Kojima so that they're all minimum of an hour long, cutscenes have been weaponized against the player. I totally understand that developers might not want audiences to miss out on important plot points and so not being able to skip on the first viewing is more than acceptable, but not offering repeated screenings a bypass is borderline criminal. It's bad enough if a boss has just turned you into a human shish kebab in mere seconds, but having to sit through like a 10 minute cutscene to have it all happen again and just think I didn't even learn from the first time around is utterly infuriating. So here we are, the literal pits of stinky video game mechanics. And trust me, this one that we're about to talk about now is like a three day hike hummer right here, and it is shoving your face right up into it. Ew. I'm speaking, of course, about slow NPCs. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, what is this wet cardboard head even on about? What the hell are slow NPCs? Well, I'll ask you, my friend. Think back to all of the countless times, and trust me, so many video games do it, where you're basically told, Let's go, adventurer. We must make haste to that one location, that one door or portal that only I can open. Follow me, friend. Let's go. Don't fall behind now. God, I'm breaking a sweat. Has this joke gone on for too long? Yeah, probably. Seriously, nothing snubs my candle out quicker than having an NPC move slower than goddamn erosion and causes me to literally run circles around them or sprint off into the distance and have enough time to go make a cup of tea. I have no idea why developers choose to make NPCs move at a pace that is slightly quicker than your walking animation, but miles slower than your running one, meaning that you have to hover in that weird like thumbstick dead zone, you know, the one between like just moving a little bit and then just all the way, it's just kind of like, oh, it feels, it feels dirty, it feels like my fingers are searching for like not safe for work material. I'm just like, just hurry up, just hurry the fuck up, hurry the fuck up. Yet you know what, my friend, much like what we're going to experience when Brexit finally hits, it can always get worse because sometimes, and I seriously hope that there's a special place in hell for these developers, sometimes they make it so that you need to keep pace with these NPCs or risk a mission failure if you fall too far behind or move too far ahead of them. For the love of God, my friend, the world is quite literally ending here, so make like your buns are burning and get a bloody move on. <sighs> and there we go, my friends. Those were these video game mechanics suck again the sequel. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below, as well as what other stuff you'd like me to cover on this fantastical series where I basically die a little inside for your entertainment. Huzzah! If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming and Warhammer board game content outside of work. So if you'd like to see it, then go check it out, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. As I usually say at the end of these videos, I am just doing this as a sort of hyperbole. I am not an angry person. I do not like being angry in general, so I would urge you to try and expel that emotion from your body as best you can. Speak to people, make sure that you have the right outlets for your anger, and make sure as well, if you have the capacity to forgive people that have wronged you in the past, to build bridges instead of burning them, because trust me, you will go on to live a much healthier and happier life if you are able to do so. It takes some effort, Trust me on that one, but it is possible. As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.